Hello and welcome to the awesome 180 channel. I am Ashtin Doctor, your habit coach. And today, after a big amount of requests from you viewers, we have Dr. Vignesh Devraj back on. And we decided this time, let's have some fun. Instead of doing a long session like you heard in the podcast that we did before, we thought we'll do smaller videos, but on interesting topics around Ayurveda and you and how you can start actually using aspects of Ayurveda in your everyday life. So one of the topics that we thought of starting off is a series on supplements, right? Because supplements, according to me, are absolutely essential. We're not getting the kind of nutrients that we need from our food and the plants that we have around us, what God has given us, what nature has given us is so important because it makes a big impact on our health and on our lifestyle. So I'm very excited to have this discussion with Dr. Vignesh on how we can start approaching supplements in a healthy manner and actually start using them in our daily life. So Dr. Vignesh, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much, Ashtin. I'm so happy to be part of your awesome 180. This is one of the best things that I really appreciate the things that you have started. I'm so looking forward for this discussion. Thank you. You know, everybody was like, wow, Dr. Vignesh has so much information. We want more. Right. So, you know, when people ask for we want more and you're in demand, we have to give more. So that is what, you know, I think we work very well together on this. I thought it's a fantastic opportunity for us to do this. We keep putting out content like this on this channel. So please don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon. So, you know, when future videos come out. So yeah, I think what we are doing, what we are doing is actually not what we are not giving something more. We are only I'm helping people to unlearn some of the things that have gone in check. <laughs> Very well put. You know, there is a process of unlearning first and that is actually more difficult than the process of learning something new. Exactly. Learning something new is okay, but you know, breaking all your belief systems. Ye kharab hai, this is bad for you, this is bad for you. And then, you know, Dr. Vignesh, one of my favorite things is when uh, I ask someone like, where did you learn about this? No, no, people say. Are, who are these people <laughs> exactly. that say? Like, who are you listening to? Where are you getting your information from? People say. So, you know, getting it from a credible source like you, I think is so essential. Thank you. So, so when we think about supplements, okay, which is the main topic for today's discussion, what are the thoughts that come to your mind? Why are supplementation important? And what are the three supplements that you've chosen for today's discussion? Okay. See, so today we have a lot of myths uh, around supplements. Some people say we don't need supplements. You know, whatever we are eating, it should come from the food. Mm. And on the other hand, you have lots of companies that uh, push the supplement down your... Uh, they just want you to buy the supplement and live with this forever. Correct. In Ayurveda, there is this uh, uh, understanding. Mm. The purpose of taking medicine is to stop taking medicine. You know, it is not something that you take it forever. Right. And definitely, if your metabolism is good, hmm. you know, our body can absorb many of it. For example, one of the common uh, Ayurvedic medications that we give has a lot of iron supplements in it. Okay. And hmm. anemia is a big issue that you see in women today. Correct. Then they say, why am I needing to take iron supplements? Why can't I get it from the natural food? Hmm. Actually, the problem is not about the food is not having the iron. It is that their ability to absorb the iron is not there. Correct. Right. So when you go to an Ayurvedic doctor, more than giving them the supplements, the first is we regulate the body's ability to absorb it first. And then along with that, when you supplement it, mm -hmm. then it works fantastic. Lovely. Lovely. So, so another aspect, when you look at an Ayurvedic supplement, see the word supplement means, you know, something is missing. So I need to have it. Supplement. Correct. Yeah, something to have it. Mm -hmm. And in Ayurveda, the difference between a medicine and mm -hmm. food. It's a very thin line. Hmm. It's not a big line. Hmm. But when you look at it from the Western science point of view, hmm. medicine is something that is going to give you an instant uh, significant result. Like hmm. okay, somebody is having high blood pressure. Hmm. They take a beta blocker, immediately it comes down. Correct. Somebody is having a headache, you give them a painkiller, it immediately comes hmm. down. Hmm. But the Western medicine has called medicine as something that is going to give you an instant relief. But even though it's only a symptomatic band-aid change. Correct. Correct. But Ayurveda looks at it like, you know, we are going for a long-term thinking. Mm -hmm. Long-term strategy is happening there. Mm -hmm. It's not just an immediate change. See, if you go to the gym immediately after your cardiologist said, okay, you're having a potential to have a heart block, so you better go to the gym. 
So immediately you go to gym, it's not going to change. You know, you might have to spend like three to six months to see some significant change. Correct. Correct. The same approach you have to go with the supplement. Mm. And food is also something you can call it a supplement. And supplement mm. is also something you can call it in the food category. Mm. Mm. In fact, I've seen Ayurvedic medicines sold abroad are sold as food supplements because uh, it is impossible to get the registration as a medicine, like how it is sold in India. Correct. Correct. So, so food three, supplement means something to have along with your food or as food? No, see, food supplement means, uh, okay, vitamins hmm. can be called to some extent as food supplement. Okay. Okay. Now, if you go to a store and they say, okay, I want to have some magnesium, this would hmm. be considered as food supplement. Okay. Okay. I want to have some iron supplement. This could be considered, it's just something to do with the bureaucracy part. It is coming under food supplement or nutraceuticals right because it's there in the food that you eat so it becomes a yeah. food supplement okay fine exactly mm -hmm. and if you look at some of the foreign countries when you sell a food supplement or when you buy a food supplement you, mm. you will be written this is not to prevent cure or diagnose any disease yes and mm. this has not been uh, undergone a medical this thing mm. but what they're saying is it is not like a painkiller which is going to give you an immediate relief but mm. for a constant period you will start seeing mild changes just like you work out on the long term basis you will start seeing a difference you Correct. do pranayama on the long term basis you will see the changes mm. so like that there are so many herbs that are mm. mentioned in ayurveda you can take it on time to time basis even mm. even then i don't mm. recommend supplements as something that you can take it for the rest of your life it is something on time to time basis you take it lovely excellent so it is something that adds on to the way that you're having your nutrition, adds on to your your lifestyle, I would say, to make certain improvements over a long term. Exactly. It is not an instant relief for anything, correct? If you approach supplement as something that is going to give you an instant relief, you'll be disappointed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like I normally go to like the Amazon reviews and look at the mm -hmm. reviews and people like for magnesium, Huh, it useless product, could not feel anything. Baba, you're not going to feel anything in magnesium like that. No, it takes a while to start feeling the effects of it. So, so similarly, yes. you know, that understanding that you have to believe in the supplement, understand it and give it its time in order exactly. for it to actually work. Lovely. Okay. So Dr. Vignesh, what supplements have we decided to discuss with us today? See, today, the, the one of the most widely used uh, supplement, in Ayurveda, especially the Ayurvedic herb is, uh, one is Ashwagandha. Correct. The other one is Gokshura and the other one that I want to talk about is Kapikachu. Okay. I know Ashwagandha, I've never heard of the other two. Okay. Hmm. One is Gokshura, the other one is Kapikachu. Since Correct. I see that you're also coming to uh, no sugar challenge, I would hmm. like to put this because this is a great... Uh, oh, nice. Hmm. Tell me, tell me. So, uh, ashwagandha, uh, ashwagandha, it is, okay, the word ashwagandha, ashwa means horse. Correct. Gandha means smell. Right. So, if you see a horse, it is full of endurance, stamina, it runs, it's a vegetarian animal. Mm. Uh, it has such profound vitality. That's what we always represent horse. And having a horse means you can go to long places. Endurance is the word that we always associate with a horse. Correct. And Correct. you look at a horse, it is uh, quite calm. At the same time, it has a lot of endurance to go to long distance. Hmm. Hmm. So when you look at a horse, we look at it has great energy, but at the same time, it knows how to utilize the energy in the right possible way. Correct. Correct. So, and that is why it is called as Ashwagandha. You know, when you take that, hmm. you have that energy of resilience and the endurance of a horse. That is what the word Ashwagandha actually means. Okay. Fantastic. So I think the ancient uh, Ayurvedic rishis, they were fantastic marketing people. You know, the yeah. name itself is it all. <laughs> Sell. So somebody told me the other day, when, when I first heard of Ashwagandha, they explained the horse part, Ashwa, and they explained Gandha as smell of the horse. So okay. they said that when you smell the root or smell the thing, it smells like the nose of a horse. Now, okay. why were these people smelling the nose of a horse? I don't know, but that's what they said. <laughs> No, the idea is, uh, see, there could be a similarity with the root and Correct. the root of the ashwagandha. Yeah. It could also have that smell. But the more idea is when you take that, you see, it is given for uh, aphrodisiac purpose. It is given for rejuvenative purpose. It is given for stress relief. It is also given to boost your immunity. Yes. 
So all of this, you know, we always, and if you look some of the, today what is happening is Ashwagandha is, uh, you know, torn out of the context, you have some sexual issues, take Ashwagandha. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that way we are misleading the mass. Yeah. It's not that you take Ashwagandha, something is going to change and you, it is a substitute for Viagra. That is how many uh, companies are uh, marketing Ashwagandha as. It doesn't Correct. work that way. Correct. It is like, okay, you go to gym for two weeks, you'll have your six packs. It doesn't work that way either. Hmm. 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 And hmm. maybe as a placebo, it would help. But Ashwagandha, it, you know, in some people, they call it as the Indian version of ginseng. Right. I was just a, about to actually say uh, that because you said all those properties, which are exactly ginseng properties as well. Yeah, the Indian version of ginseng. So Correct. this is something that I recommend if you're stressed, if you're finding difficult to sleep. Hmm. And it is not that it is it will help you to sleep. It will calm down your overactivity. Hmm. And if your nervous system is low, it will also regulate it. It's like it's more like an immunomodulator kind of a thing. You know? Correct. If it is too much high, it helps to bring it down. If it's too much low, it will bring it up. Hmm. So that's the idea of ashwagandha. Hmm. So I recommend ashwagandha like uh, one or two tablets, especially if you're working in an IT field and you're sleepless and mm -hmm. you have your, especially during the Corona times, IT field is the most overworked. Correct. And Correct. Uh, on the other hand, now, uh, you know, depression and anxiety is going over the roof than any other time because of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. In such situations, ashwagandha is a great supplement that you get, that will help you to calm down. Mm -hmm. And more than that, it will also enhance your immune system. Okay. All right. And who cannot take it? Let me just explain that. Mm -hmm. Who will not benefit? If you're taking any antidepressants, if mm -hmm. you're taking any anti-anxiety therapy, this will be this will not give you any benefit because it's like it will not give you any benefit for the mental part, mm -hmm. but it will give you for the metabolism and the immunity part. Okay, very interesting. Because the anti-anxiety and antidepressants are already so much so much more right. powerful in exactly. that direction, you won't necessarily feel this, but you'll feel the energy bit regulation at least. Okay, lovely. When somebody is taking an antidepressive pill and you think that ashwagandha is also going to add, it's like putting a torchlight to the sunlight because antidepressant pill is so powerful. You know, it literally numbs your nervous system. Mm. Yes. So at that time, ashwagandha is not going to help either. No, absolutely. So this is given in powder form. Some people give it in tablet form. And some people in Kerala, we also make a mild wine out of it. Oh, nice. Ashwagandha Rishta. Okay. But it is not taken for recreation purpose, but it is given as a medicine. <laughs> <laughs> because in ancient times, when you blend it with a little bit, about 4% alcohol will be there. It's called as ashwagandha. When you right. take that, it calms you down much faster, especially when you take it in the evening time. In interesting. So how would you recommend taking this to somebody? Uh, taking this to somebody? Because I know you can easily buy these uh, capsules online. right? Yeah. You can get them from an Amazon or something, get them delivered. Now, yeah. Is the capsule potent? Should you make a chai out of it? Should you mix ashwagandha with something else to even enhance that further? Should you take it at night? Should you take it during the day? One tablet day, one tablet night, two tablets. Now, how should you you know start thinking about the dosing? Uh, if you look at the Ayurvedic textbook, mm -hmm. the ashwagandha was not rolled as a tablet or capsule. It is actually mentioned as a powder form. Okay. But today, you know, the tablet is the most. Uh, palatable, I mean, the most easily uh, accepted dosage form than when you take in many different types because mm. it's much easier. You take a pill and then you take it. Correct. Uh, and so they realize, yeah. okay, powder is still, and if some people don't like the taste of it, let's just put it into a capsule and take it and you just drink water, it goes there. So if you can't take the powder form, go for the capsule and then you go for the tablet. Mm. But how do you take the powder form? Just like eat it like that? You can create just like a tea. You know, okay. You, some hot water, hmm. put uh, like less than half, one gram hmm. or half a gram, hmm. you mix it and you drink it. Okay. All right. So the best time to take it is before you go to sleep. Lovely. All right. So at least I'm doing one thing right. Good. And if some people, if they're, if you're into workout, if hmm. you're in you know, a lot of physical work, hmm. then I recommend you can take it in the morning and night. Okay. All right. So, you know, what so I used to do I was take it like morning and night. <laughs> Sorry. I think there was a connection issue. Sorry, please finish. No, I take it, you know, whenever I, I have intense uh, exercise days or mm. I do some cardio exercise, I take mm. it twice a day, morning okay. and evening. All right. All right. Because it, it basically works on calming the neurological pathways. So when you do a okay. strenuous workout, it, it eases that out as well. Love exactly. it. So 
tell me this was a good idea that i used to do so um, back in the day i used to make what i used to call an adaptogen chai okay i used to love having my turmeric tea so i used to make a little turmeric little pepper ghee blend and in that i used to put my ashwagandha and have it right and if i was having another adaptogen maybe a brahmi or something mix it everything one shot phatak karke because i had read that um turmeric helps in the absorption of these kinds of nutrients and these kinds of um you know herbs now i did not talk to a doctor i didn't know any doctor to talk to now that i am talking to you good idea hmm. to do bad idea to do see it only enhances it's not like uh, see in ayurvedic most of the ayurvedic medications hmm. single herbs is a very recent marketing trend that you observe ah okay in ayurveda always a group of herbs have mentioned Hmm. okay there are certain times when you can take single herb but single herbs is more fashionable today because it's much easier to market right in ancient times always a group of herbs are mentioned to hmm. take so that hmm. will help you enhance there is a synergistic effect hmm. 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 so definitely when you mix it with that it's not that you it is nothing wrong it only adds on to it for example with turmeric hmm. definitely it will enhance but when it comes to turmeric many people think that turmeric you can just have it like that turmeric mm. actually adds more heat to you mm. uh, and when you blend it with something that is cooling down mm. the effect efficacy of turmeric will go up okay. so that is why in ayurveda it is mentioned turmeric with milk is great right okay because so, it's a fat soluble absorption is better with turmeric right. so along with that, when you take ashwagandha your mm. ability to absorb will absorb. go up okay lovely super but ashwagandha i don't recommend it for people who are having very weak stomach hmm okay very weak digestion hmm and um, so people with like an ibs so people who get stomach upsets very fast who has loose motions very quickly who have a weak stomach avoid as as a rule uh, so uh, ibs is a different concept in in fact in ibs i give ashwagandha what oh, i'm saying okay. is uh, when they say if they're having heavy constipation right in such situation ashwagandha might make things worse for some people okay. but when it comes to ibs where they are having constant you know they have to go to the toilet in such condition because ibs has a lot to do with uh, anxiety issues ah, interesting so uh, so in my experience whenever someone comes with an ibs hmm. 80 to 70 to 80 percent of my treatment is to calm them down only then then the ibs just uh, goes away much easier you ask people with ibs so do you get stressed quite fast hmm. i've been always stressed you know that's one of the answers they would give so that is why ashwagandha really helps there understanding so it's actually working more on their nervous system coming them nervous down system. more than anything that lovely okay super so that was ashwagandha herb number 1 supplement number 1 yes the second one the second one uh, is gokshura gokshura yes okay it's uh, okay now you will see many um, uh, fitness companies that are selling tablets mm. for improving testosterone mm. natural testosterone mm. they would say it has this uh, ayurvedic uh, herb called as gokshura it's called as tribulus terrestris okay okay that in sound i know it sound it's not so damn scary huh? <laughs> this is something that can enhance natural testosterone okay and more than that it's a great diuretic it helps to eliminate water mass hmm. and it also helps to add lean muscle mass okay interesting and we give it a lot for when people are having kidney issues or too much of puffiness in the face hmm. water hmm. being uh, you know some women they say when they are sitting for a long period they have edema in the feet correct yes or they uh, the water clogging will happen yes and it's also an aphrodisiac but more than that it hmm. helps to eliminate unwanted uh, water especially from the lymphatic system very interesting so uh, when it comes to people who are athletic they are planning to build muscles gokshura is one of the best supplements that they can take but never take it at night because if you take it at night you will be constantly awake some in some people they say they go to toilet quite often because ah because you dilate it right so it's also very good for example when like i'm i'm just like thinking on my feet now when you have water retention from say uh, cheat days or or eating rubbish food where you know you you feel that puffiness you feel that uneasiness is this also a good time to get rid of uh, yes, to have it yes, to get rid of one of the best antidotes for that one of the best antidotes for that okay lovely 
and um, how and do you Gokshura recommend also, again yeah, Gokshura, again you you okay nowadays in the market you don't get the powder but in kerala when you go to this local uh, medicinal plant herb vendors you know they mm. will be happy when you go to them you smell a whole f- a herbal pharmacy there oh wow they never give it a tablet they will give it like a, the seeds of that mm. and we take it home we boil it with water and drink it okay but today you will get it in powdered form and also in tablet form many mm. companies sell it in tablet form okay so you can uh, take it in the morning and afternoon Hmm. And, and just um, make, but if you take this, make sure you are hydrating yourself well hmm. because your body tends to eliminate a lot of water. Hmm. So you have to hydrate yourself well, and it will activate the kidneys uh, a little more than the usual. Okay. And um, people who should not be taking this? See, as of now, if you are having any kidney issues or low blood pressure, hmm. this is hmm. not recommended. People who are having low blood pressure, this is not recommended. But Correct. people with high blood pressure, I highly recommend this. Okay, very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Because low blood pressure, in any case, your volume is much lower. Exactly. So you're gonna just because it's gonna drop that further. You might faint, so you don't want that. And, and um, if you're having any uh, prostate issues or you know frequent urination at night, hmm. then please don't take it after evening or after the noon time. Always take it in the morning and the afternoon time. What is the efficacy period so that we know when to to um, cut it off? Should we? Last dosage at three o'clock. Last dosage at two o'clock. Last dosage at lunch. How should you plan it out? This is for people who are having issues urinating too much at night. Hmm. Otherwise, uh, you can also take it at night. Hmm. But uh, if you are drinking too much in the evening time, hmm. first of all, too much of liquid at night. This will, uh, you know, make your sleep also disturbed, and then you wake up tired. Yeah, absolutely. Like you don't on. need that. Correct. So the best time is, you know, don't take it not later than three to four p.m. Three to four. Best is after your lunch hmm. and after your breakfast. This is, these are the two best times to take it. And p- p- spell it again. Gokshura. Okay? Gokshura. Gokshura. G O K S H U R A. Gokshura. Gokshura. And you can get it in a tablet form online. Use that. You can get it from tablet form or capsule form. Lovely. All right. Super. Amazing. I love this one. I'm going to definitely try it out. I had no clue about it. And especially uh, women who say that I'm holding on to a lot of water. You know. Yes. Water, uh, you know, when you touch their muscle, it's not muscle, it's more like, it's not even fat, it's more like water being clogged. Yes. You feel it really fluffy. This is one of the best uh, supplements that they can take. But please don't take it more than one month at a time. Mm. Take it for some time and then pause it. And mm. then you can see how the feeling is and then you can restart it. Because the body has to use to it and then the body's natural way of eliminating has to come back. Uh, and how does it help with the muscle growth? You see, on one hand, this will also help you increase your testosterone. Mm. The lean muscle mass will go up because your body's metabolism will get better. Okay. Okay. See, uh, according to Ayurveda, we have this concept of uh, datus, like mm. the food we eat becomes mm. blood and the blood becomes muscle and the muscle becomes fat and then it becomes the bone, bone marrow and then the shukra, the last datu. It's okay. just the ancient scientists, they understood it that way, they documented it that way. Mm. So when our metabolism is low, our mm ability to produce muscle will go low and the fat will go up. Okay. So when you are exercising, when you do a lot of cardio and when you're regular with yoga, mm. your muscle and fat, there will mm. be a balance to it. Mm, 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 so mm. this is a add on to reduce the tendency of the body to keep building fat and it will help to increase the muscle. Very interesting. Okay. But don't consider like this is like a replacement for some of the growth hormones. Never no, even no. for that. First of all, I don't recommend growth hormones in many ways. But this is a very organic way of yeah. approach. No, in fact, you know, boosting testosterone is very different from taking external testosterone. Exactly. Like, exactly. There might be a time in your life in the future when as you age, you might want to take it. Not from a muscle exactly. building point of view, but from a happiness point of view. Because testosterone, exactly. like andropause, is something that is not pleasant for men to go through exactly. as well. So you might want to take external testosterone later on in life. But for now, at least what whatever you can bo- do to boost testosterone, you should be doing. You know, like exactly avoiding foods that lower it, increasing foods that increase it, doing your heavy exercises again help in testosterone building. So very very important. I'm completely with you on this. Exactly. Awesome. All right, then supplement number three. Supplement number three is Kapi Kachu. Kapi Kachu. Spell it, spell yes. it, spell it. K A P I. Kapi. K A C H U. 
Kapi Kachu. All right, lovely. Okay, this is one herb. Uh, okay, usually um, we give this to uh, to improve the nervous functions hmm. and also to calm down the nervous function. But recently, studies have found out this is the the most natural organic way to increase your dopamine release. Oh wow! Okay. So we give it for people who are having early onset of Parkinson's hmm. as a medicine. Hmm. 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 But even in a natural way, if hmm. you are, if you are, if you need a lot of focus hmm. in your work, you know, hmm. you need to improve your ability to be creative. You know, hmm. you need that laser sharp focus. Hmm. And on top of that, this is, this is also a great rejuvenator and an aphrodisiac. Okay. This is also supplementing the natural growth of testosterone. Okay. So uh, these are the three herbs. Hmm. All the three will help to increase your, uh, you know, immunity. Hmm. All the three will help to increase your overall energy levels hmm. and also hmm. your uh, overall sense of well-being. Nice. And they work well together. Uh, usually, in some herbs, you will see all of them put together. Okay. But when you're taking all of these three together, it is important that you have some digestive also along with that, hmm. like trifala or. This will also help to improve the absorption of that. Interesting. And um, all these supplements, especially the Ayurvedic ones, should they be taken along with your food? A lug say from your food? Is there any? Uh, see, the, the, the issue is in modern medicine, they have this concept. You have to take it uh, after food, like mm. some tablets. You have to take it after the food. If you take it in empty stomach, it could create some problems. Mm. So in Ayurveda, the most powerful medication is the juice of a herb. Juice, juice like juice of you, a herb. Oh, so actually squeeze it. it. Yes. Right, right. Okay. That is considered as the most powerful, potent uh, therapy that we mm. can get from nature's mm. plants. Mm. But some of them don't have the express juice. You cannot express the juice. For mm. example, if it is dried ginger, you cannot extract any yeah. water from it. Yeah. Uh, but aloe vera, you can extract the juice out of it. Mm. So in those conditions, what you do is you make it like a kada, like a tea. Mm. And then you drink it. Hmm. So these things, you can take it in empty stomach. Hmm. You can also take it after food, but don't take it immediately after food. Give it like half an hour time okay. so that okay. the absorption is better. Interesting. Yeah. Because you so need the enzymes to at least function in your body, exactly. get them released, and then you put these in. Exactly. Hmm. And if I empty out, for example, as capsules into water, boil it, heat it, and drink it as a tea, all these three together, it would make sense? Should this, I do something like that? This definitely works better hmm. because uh, water sol these are these all have water soluble extracts in it. Okay, interesting. So uh, the tea formulation is the first best. Hmm. See, anything that you take it in water is much faster absorbed than hmm. when you take a tablet because the body has to wait till this disintegrates and then hmm. get into our bloodstream. Hmm. 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 So when you take it in liquid. You know, you are outsourcing many of the body's stomach's uh, work already Correct. in the water form. Correct. So the water soluble is much faster absorbed than the solid form. And you put it and boil the water or you take out hot water and then put it? See, the best way I would recommend is hmm. you have a hot water and you hmm. put a tea bag, right? Right. Same way, instead of the tea bag, you put, you put the, this, put this mix it and then take it. Lovely. Now, you get a lot of tea bags which has ashwagandha in it. You get a lot of tea bags which has kapikachu in it. Hmm. And do you suggest those? Because I would think that the, the, the quantity of ashwagandha would not be enough in those to make a dramatic difference, right? Or that's more of a marketing gimmick and you should stick to actually the big dosage that comes in your capsules. See, um, as far as the dosage is concerned, uh, okay, whether it's tea bag or with a tablet, there is a limit of how much our body can absorb. Hmm. So you can take it in tea bag and you can also take it in... Uh, capsules but in order to meet the capsules from the tea bag maybe i mean in order to meet the same result of the tea bag from the capsule you might have to take more capsule oh the tea bag will be more effective tea bag, tea bag not tea bag when you put it as a powder ha huh, as a powder Just, correct yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 but tea bag it will be a lesser the dosage will be a slightly lesser correct. compared to the powder form because yes. powder form the whole thing is going inside yeah tea bag we are limiting only whatever is the water soluble then you are drinking it correct like there are lots of uh, teas that have tulsi, chamomile, and ashwagandha, but they'll be in such small, 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 small quantities that it will have a 
tiny effect it won't necessarily have a nice big effect no, i mean you cannot meet the the real uh, dosage that you can get it from a powder form you know yeah. just put it in powder and getting it that way correct absolutely fantastic so um one a couple of last things to think about one is that when throughout we were discussing testosterone right both ashwagandha and all the other are also going to start boosting that up so for the women who are listening to this mm-hmm. you know are they scared that suddenly my testosterone will go up how does it affect women versus men is there a difference is there something they should be concerned about something they should not be concerned about okay so uh, when it comes to the hormones that we are getting it from the plants hmm. and it is not that this will increase your testosterone just like that it, it won't happen that way hmm. we, because if we compare it with the testosterone supplement this is nothing yes a very mild subtle uh, dose that is coming from that correct so see women also have testosterone hmm. males also have estrogen and prolactin hmm. Hmm. we all have that it's just that in males the testosterone uh, is much more than a woman yes and women also needs the testosterone because once the testosterone becomes low our muscles become flabby skin ages much faster correct testosterone is like the anti aging aspect of that correct correct we take it from this natural source this is something that we don't have to worry about lovely so it is safe for both men and women not to not to oh, be yes, concerned definitely. about it. lovely and the last part is we have uh, one called as shatavari yes this is like the feminine version of ashwagandha okay so it's an either or or it's an shatavari and ashwagandha they, they can take shatavari and ashwagandha but especially shatavari is fantastic when it comes to balancing the feminine hormones hmm okay and um, okay so we should we and must I, add this to our next uh, uh session as well definitely no nah, because yeah yeah because you know otherwise uh, there are so many like i to wanted to throw in brahmi and all the others also in there is conversation but we need to pace ourselves yeah. because each of these deserve their own understanding like exactly i did not know about these other two i have been taking ashwagandha for a long time i understand ashwagandha i love the way suddenly you feel very mellow you know like i'll tell you my experience with mm-hmm. ashwagandha i take it normally at night about 2 hours before bed because that's the time i finish my meals and i wait half an hour like you said half an hour 45 minutes before i take my supplement so that's when i do it and uh, the first week or first 4 5 days i won't feel anything and then suddenly there's this mellow that sets in you know things that you would mm-hmm. feel that agitation on don't agitate you and is that general you know that everything's just gone down the calm, calmness is calm. settled yeah. yeah you know and that's what i notice when i take ashwagandha and i normally at night do ashwagandha and brahmi together that's my way of working i don't know if it actually makes a difference or not we'll discuss that in the next uh, episode but uh, sure. the important thing is when do you cycle them right which of these do you continue forever which of these do you cycle and if you cycle one month on one month off one month on one month off or one month on one week off one month on one week off how should we do so ashwagandha i have uh, prescribed it for some people with too much of stress or chronic fatigue syndrome mm-hmm. or burnout i have prescribed it for 6 months continuously take it for 6 months on a heavy dose okay provided their digestion is also good in mm-hmm. such condition mm-hmm. but when it comes to gokshura i recommend it take it more than one month at a time take it mm-hmm. for one month take a gap and mm-hmm. then you can restart okay kapi ka chu same you take it for one month take a gap and then again restart it but ashwagandha you have the luxury to continue it for a very long period okay lovely lovely super but kapi ka chu i don't recommend if, if there are people who are having parkinson's if they are taking dopamine uh, uh, mm. chemical version of that to enhance that mm. then i don't recommend kapi ka chu because you're already doing it's like taking ashwagandha with antidepressants absolutely okay it's the same same principle exactly but but i have one question about dopamine right so yeah. right now we are in a world that is fueled by dopamine correct yeah. all our scrolling is dopamine all our sugar is dopamine everything is dopamine why would we want something that enhances dopamine would we we want something that maybe lowers dopamine enhances serotonin or something some of the other um, neurotransmitters so you see today we are having a, a lack of dopamine because we are using dopamine for the wrong reasons 
Okay, fine. So it's come from the other way. It says that we are dopamine depleted because you've used so much. This at least gives exactly. you a little bit boost. Fine. Exactly. Okay. All right. Understood. Understood. Lovely. Superb. Doctor, anything else do you want to talk about in this particular episode of ours where we're discussing these three supplements? No, experiment them and be open to these and hmm. see how you feel. Hmm. And uh, before taking a chemical version of supplements, always hmm. try the natural one first. Hmm. Because the natural one will be long lasting yes. and your body will get adapted to it. And it's much better than compared to getting it from a chemical supplement or synthetic supplements. Lovely. Start with this, see how you feel and then you can think about it. And then you can go on, you can try something else. And um, the last things I know people are going to ask, are there any brands that you recommend? Do you want to mention any brands or, so or how should you? Brands, there are so many brands uh, available, but in different parts of India. Hmm. When I also make my own version of these supplements, hmm. uh, many other things. You can check into that. You can look into the uh, reviews and get that. That's the best I would recommend. Look at okay. the reviews and then take it. So, so whatever supplements you're taking, look at the reviews and, and see exactly. that. How can and people get in touch with you in case they want to ask you questions? The rest or... is through my Instagram. I have this called Vignesh Devraj and mm. also my website is vigneshdevraj.com. Lovely. Oh, that's very simple then. All right. Lovely. Thank you so much, doctor. I can't wait for our next session together. Sure. Next topic, we will talk about the other supplements for female hormones and uh, some of the ability to focus. Yeah, I love that. I think focus is something that definitely people need more of right now. I get so many questions around focus. Focus depleted and memory enhancement. We'll focus on that. Superb. Love it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.